and the enzyme here used is pyruvate kinase. That is also used magnesium ion or sometimes K positive as an activator. And finally, we have two molecules of pyruvic acid. So, in the complete glycolysis, if we summarize glycolysis, then there are 10 steps during glycolysis. We have 11 compounds in glycolysis. There is one step that is this one, conversion of 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde into 1,3-diphosphoglyceraldehyde, which is a non-enzymatic step of the reaction. And then what we have finally from one glucose, there is two molecules of pyruvic acid. Apart from these two molecules of pyruvic acid, if we summarize the use of ATP and the formation, so initially we have two ATP molecules used to make the sugar unstable, that steps are substrate level phosphorylation, one is the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate and another is the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-diphosphate. So if these two steps are concerned, ATP molecule are initially used. So we have two molecules ATP used initially, but after the splitting of 6-carbon sugar into the 3-carbon compound, we have two again phosphorylation steps, one is here. 1,3-diphosphoglycic acid to 3-phosphoglycic acid because these are the two molecules. So, two ATP are formed here and again in the last step, 2-phosphoenol pyruvic acid to 2-pyruvic acid, we have two molecules of ATP formed here. So, total two ATP molecules are used and four ATP molecules are formed. So, if we sum up, then finally we have from one glucose molecules, only two ATP molecules are directly from, from the substrate level phosphorylation steps. If we notice the substrate level phosphorylation, then simply 1, 2, 3 and 4, there are 4 steps which are substrate level phosphorylation and finally from substrate level phosphorylation, we have 2 ATP molecule form per molecule of glucose oxidized during respiration. It is common for both aerobic and anaerobic, so it does not matter. We have all at least 2 ATP molecule form. Apart from 2 molecules of pyruvic acid, 2 molecules of ATP, we have also two molecules of NADS2 from 1,3-diphosphoglyceraldehyde to 1,3-diphosphoglycic acid. So that step is the oxidative, that step is the oxidative dephosphorylation. So this one is oxidative phosphorylation. or dehydrogenation because the enzyme is dehydrogenase. We can use both the terms, oxidative dephosphorylation because these NADH2, you know, as we discussed earlier, NADH2 or FADH2 only provide 3 or 2 ATP respectively if enter into the ETS. So if this is the glycolysis of an aerobic organism, then these two ATP NADH2 molecule enter into the final step that is the ETS and from there, 6 ATP are formed because from one molecule of NADH2 we have 3 ATP formed during ETS. So if these NADH2 molecule can enter into the mitochondria which is 100% during aerobic respiration, if this happens then this is also equivalent to 6 ATP. So as far as aerobic glycolysis is concerned, we have total 8 ATP molecules formed from one molecule of glucose oxidized during glycolysis and if it is anaerobic glycolysis, then we have just two molecules of ATP formed because these NADS2 do not provide any ATP because ETS is not happening in anaerobic respiration. So, in the final sum up, one glucose molecule is converted into two molecules of pyruvic acid. We have two molecules formed finally and two molecules of NADH2 that serve as the energy carrier if glycolysis pro proceeds to aerobic respiration. Those NADH2 molecules form 6 ATP during ATS. If it is in case of anaerobic respiration, we have just 2 ATP molecules formed during glycolysis.